Channel 2S is brought to you by New Type HQ. Get your kits and supplies at the link in the description below. Hello and welcome to Channel 2S, everyone. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and it's time for another episode of Gunplin News. And right off the bat, I'm just going to say it straight up to you guys. This one's going to be a little bit of a downer. Not too much of a downer, just a little bit. A little bit on the depressing side because uh, we've really had a pretty sad year for Gunpla overall, I think. So this lovely lad you see right here is the Strike Dagger. This is one of the grunt suits from Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny. I'm not going to pretend like I know any more about it because I have not watched either of those series in full and I do not ever intend to. However, I do quite like the look of the Strike Gundam and I also like the look of the Dagger L. So combining those cool shoulder designs from the Strike Gundam with the Dagger L is a pretty cool combination and one that I'm definitely a fan of. I'm sure there are other modifications made to the design as well, however those are the most obvious ones that immediately jump out to me. Okay, let's actually pull these up for comparison. So far as I can tell, the shoulders and the head seem to be the biggest changes here. Unfortunately though, this kit is, once again, as was the case with almost everything we got this year, a premium Bandai model. Now, fortunately, this is a very small, basic high grade, so it shouldn't be too expensive of a premium Bandai model, but for the people that wanted to army build this kit, it does kind of suck, especially when we got the Dagger L at retail, and while I've seen some people try to say the Strike Dagger isn't as popular as the Dagger L, I'm just not buying that at all. As someone who's not super familiar with Seed, I barely knew the Dagger L existed before they made a high grade of it, but I was definitely very familiar with the Strike Dagger. In fact, when they announced the Dagger L, I actually thought that was the Strike Dagger, because as far as I knew, that was the only version version of the dagger there was. So I think making this one premium Bandai while the previous releases retail is pretty disappointing in that regard. Now the one shining light at the end of this tunnel is the fact that we are now one step closer to a slaughter dagger which is in my opinion the coolest of the dagger variants so we at least have that going for us but unfortunately if you want a strike dagger you're going to have to pay the P Bandai tax. Now accessory wise this kit is going to be pretty sparse we just have the machine gun we have the beam saber we have the shield in the backpack Nothing real fancy here, nothing really to write home about. This is a very basic high grade, the kind that would be great to army build if it wasn't you know, a premium Bandai exclusive. Overall, from what I've heard, this is one of the better grunt suits we've gotten recently from the HGUC line, simply because this one actually does not use the clip together joint mechanism that a lot of the other kits do, meaning that it actually holds together nicely, has good tight joints, and is overall a pleasant experience to handle. Wish I could say the same about some other kits I've built lately. Now, in a vacuum, this individual specific kit being premium Bandai wouldn't really be the end of the world. However, it does remind us of the rather depressing picture we've had for the last year or so regarding Gunpla releases. Now, when I think about Gunpla and I think about what the real main meat of Gunpla is, yes, there's stuff like Re100s, full mechanics, entry grades, SDs, but when I think about like the real meat of Gunpla, like what is Gunpla really? I think high grade, I think real grade, and I think master grade. I thought it'd be fun to go back and look at what we've gotten this year for retail high grades, real grades, and master grades. And, um, well, it's not a very pretty picture. So let's start with master grades. Right off the bat, we got two regular retail releases. We have the 1.5 of the DOM, which is going to take about a year and a half to load. There we go. The 1.5 DOM. And the next picture should be the 1.5 Rick DOM. There we go. Yep. So those are our two retail releases. And then our third is one that is yet to be released. That is the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom, my personal favorite kit of the year and the one I am anticipating the most. However, that is a combined total of a whopping three Master Grades for the entire year, two of which are very light retools of the exact same kit, which is also a kit we've had for about 20 years now. Not exactly the best showing for the Master Grade, but hey, least High Grade's gonna make up for it, right? Yeah, not exactly. For the entire year of 2022, we had literally one singular HGUC kit. Just Shenlong. That's it. Every other HGUC kit we got for the entire year was a premium Bandai exclusive. And honestly, Real Grade didn't fare that much better either, as the only retail release we got for Gundam specifically was the G Gundam's God Gundam. Which is, to be fair, not that unusual for Real Grade, as we usually only get two or three of these a year, but it doesn't really help out the whole overall picture. It's easy sometimes when we're getting all these P Bandai announcements to only look at the specific announcement and think, oh, well, maybe this one specific kit makes sense to be a premium Bandai release. However, when you take a step back and you look at the big picture, you realize just how much of Gunpla is P Bandai now. And I know it's something that a lot of you guys are probably tired of hearing, but I really want to hammer home the scope of how many P Bandai kits we get versus retail because I feel like the full scope and impact of it is beyond what a lot of people are realizing. I mean, for context, this right here is the one singular retail HGUC we got, and then this entire list is all of the exclusive releases from 2022. 
Yeah, quite a heavy contrast, especially when some of the worst previous years for exclusive releases had more like a 50-50 ratio, not a 50 to 1 ratio. And when it comes to Master Grade, things aren't really that much better. Now, it should be noted that a lot of these are Gundam-based Tokyo exclusives, which are usually more along the lines of clear color variants, metallic variants, but if you read the names of these here, anything that doesn't say clear color or metallic or gloss coating or something after it is basically an entirely new model. You know, your X-Impulse, your Jin Gladiator, some Mission Packs, some Raijin pack for the Eclipse Gundam. That type of stuff is all premium Bandai exclusives, and while none of these individually are maybe things that necessarily could have been at retail, it certainly does hurt to see this many exclusive releases while we get hardly anything at all that's, you know, actually available at retail. Something that you can go and pick up at your local hobby shop. Something that you can go and buy at your favorite online store. Something that you don't need to camp out on the PBNDI homepage for refreshing the page over and over again until it goes up for pre-order for 30 seconds. Something that you don't have to make a split-second decision to pre-order several months before it comes out and can actually wait until you see a review of it so you can make an informed opinion about whether or not you want to buy it. This is the kind of stuff that really dampens a lot of the enjoyment that people get out of Gunpla nowadays. You know what? I'm gonna tally these all up right now. So we got 17 PBNDI high grades versus one at retail. We got 10p Bandai Master Grade releases versus 3 at retail, and we got 2p Bandai Real Grade releases versus 1 at retail. Now, on the bright side though, going into 2023, we do have quite a few new retail announcements that shows that things may be changing for the better, which from Mercury is, of course, going to be giving us a lot of retail kits because it's the new show, and there's show on TV marketing new kits. They can sell kits at retail. It's not exactly rocket science to figure out why they would want to do that. However, no matter how good 2023 turns out to be for Gunpla, it doesn't change the fact that 2022 was, in all honesty, absolutely awful. So we got some not really in-hand pictures, but like some event convention pictures of the Gundam for Act here. This is a design that interests me quite a lot, both because I like how it looks in general, and I'm also really interested in seeing how this gets worked into the show. The character piloting this has shown a lot of interest in Stiletto's aerial Gundam so far, and it's not entirely clear if he's doing that because he knows that he has a Gundam and he wants to learn if she has one as well, or if he's trying to learn more about her Gundam so that he can go ahead and build his Gundam for Act. I feel like there's a lot of different ways they could take that, so I'm interested to see which way the show ends up going. As as for the kit itself, unfortunately it is using the same bare bones fine build style construction that a lot of the other Witch from Mercury kits, in fact pretty much all of them have been using, however it is a very cool design and that might be enough to push me over the edge to buy it anyways. It's a very unique looking kit, I really like that head sculpt and overall I think it's a pretty cool design. At 2000 yen I really would have preferred to see some more conventional style joint construction, but depending on how the initial reviews of this model look I might have to pick one up. We got some actual images of the Yaosobi collab with Witcher Mercury. Now we saw the promo image of this before, but the problem with it being a promo image was that we couldn't really see what these kits were actually going to look like. So this is the deluxe edition of the CD with the opening theme song for the show. And as we can see here, it comes with some pretty cool stuff. So you get this cool, I believe this is a clear folder with the Gundam Aerial on it. And then the main piece you get here is the Demi Trainer in an exclusive color scheme with some cool new decals. Now I saw the pictures and I was kind of holding out on it because I thought, hey, these are promo images. The stickers probably aren't going to look that great. But I got to say, even with these just being stickers slapped on top of the armor, it still looks pretty cool. I actually kind of want to get one of these now. I don't typically go for these kind of limited release things, but if I see this online and I find it for a good price, I might have to pick it up because it is actually pretty cool. I love that color scheme on the Demi and the, the stickers really don't look that bad. I think the only way they could make this cooler would be if these stickers and the print on them is somehow UV reactive. So when you shine an ultraviolet light on these, they glow like neon signs. So the Master Grade Age 1 Full Glance is going to be released in two different versions. As we talked about during the All Japan hobby show there is going to be a full release that includes the age one and a separate release of just the pack and equipment however there's actually going to be an extra difference on top of that. So the full version of the H1 full glance, so the one that includes an H1 body, is going to be in the designer colors. Now this is a slightly different color scheme for the full glance. It's got more of a purplish tone of the armor, and the red is a lot more subdued. Meanwhile, if you want a more anime style full glance, what you're going to have to do is get the add-on set, buy a separate age one normal at retail and combine them together yourself. So this does kind of give you a bit of a choice between which version you prefer. Now, I would much rather get both of these in one go, so I am probably going to get the designer colors version, and fortunately I think the colors on this do actually look pretty good. Now one kind of interesting aspect of the age one full glance that we didn't see at the expo is that you actually get different options for the cannons. So in addition to the standard cannons that the high grade comes with, we do get these alternate versions as well, which have tips that open up to reveal some missiles. Now I've not seen Gundam Age, so I'm not 
not going to pretend like I know what these are. However, it's always cool to see more options, especially on a premium master grade like this. So the MSRP for the full designer color set for the Age 1 Full Glance set is 7,300 yen, which is a lot for a master grade kit. This is not going to be a cheap model. I would expect this to probably be around 85 once it drops on the USP Bandai shop. And as much as it's going to hurt my wallet, I am definitely going to have to pick one of these up. If you decide to go the add-on set route though, it's only going to be around 3,000 yen. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like. This video was recorded from one of my live streams. I usually try to stream around 4 o'clock in the afternoon till 6 or 7 in the evening Eastern Standard Time. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next stream or any future videos I upload, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I'd like to also extend a thank you to my patrons for helping make this channel possible and a special thank you to my Master Grade Tier patrons like Yank. If you want to join the Patreon yourself, you will gain access to cool features like full archives of past streams and early access to some new videos. Thanks again for watching and as always, I'm your host Second Soundwave and I'll see you next time. Take care guys.